this video, I'll talk about unrooted phylogenetic trees and show how they're interpreted. Many phylogenetic trees have a root. They have a node near the, at the bottom that indicates the common ancestor of all of the taxa indicated on the tree. But phylogenetic, tree, phylogenetic trees don't have to have a root. Here's an example where the, it's kind of showing as a spiral. The, the root is not indicated. We don't know where the uh, initial common ancestor of all the species are. So as a case study here, we'll talk about syphilis. Syphilis is a spirochete. It's a major bacterial taxa. It's an STD, which evades immune system and evades host cells. So it first attaches to the extracellular membrane, makes contact with uh, the cellular membrane, and then invades between cells. So it's often called the stealth pathogen for its ability to evade the immune system. Lyme disease is also caused by a spirochete. It's in the genus Borrelia. So it's not an STD, but it's another nasty disease that's related. Yaws is a non-STD infectious spirochete, so it has the same circular spiraling shape. It's actually in the same genus as syphilis, but it is not an STD. So often researchers have looked to compare and contrast what makes yaws and different, different from each other. Syphilis and yaws look almost identical under the microscope. Actually, they're not just the same species, the same genus. They're considered to be the same species and they just different they're different subspecies. So syphilis, the STD, is called Treponema pallidum, subspecies pallidum. Yaws is Treponema pallidum pertinu. Yaws is primarily a tropical disease, especially in Africa, where syphilis occurs around the globe. And the genomes of both these organisms has been sequenced. And even though they have very different symptoms, they have very different ecologies, syphilis is spreading through sexual contact, yaws just through physical contact, their genomes are 98.8% the same. And at the protein level, allowing for some silent mutations that don't impact the actual proteins, 70.5% of the proteins are identical. That, in, excuse me, that incorporates both silent mutations um, and, um, yeah, silent Silent mutations that don't impact. They can change the codon, but they don't change the actual amino acid. Uh, large, some of the amino acids, some of the mutations do impact um, an amino acid, but 20%, um, they just impact a single amino acid. So these genomes are very, very similar. A recent study has plotted out s different strains of syphilis and yaws and compared them to other organisms. So down here, this is TPA. These are Treponema pallidum, subspecies pallidum. Each name here is a different strain that's been isolated from a different patient that has syphilis. And here are different yaws strains. So this is within a subspecies. Strains represent different populations or different variants. And this is all presented as a unrooted phylogenetic tree. It's very common to use unrooted trees in when studying bacteria, also with sequence data and genomic data. Again, the tips here are individual strains. The tips in phylogenetic trees can be represent many, many different things. So anytime you're looking at a phylogenetic tree, make sure you know what the tips mean. Typically, unbranched trees the branch lengths have meaning, and in this case, the branch lengths are indicating how similar the genomes of these different strains are. So a long branch indicates a large difference. Short branch lengths indicate uh, less degree of difference. It's un to compare how similar two tips are, we add up the length of the branch lengths that connect them. So we could, here, this is actually rabbit syphilis, and we can add up the length of this branch here, and this branch here, and this branch here to go down to one of these strains. And the total branch lengths tells us about how similar the genomes are. It, uh, when branch lengths matter, there always has to be a scale indicating as how to interpret that. 
So we have syphilis down here, yaws up at the top. Each strains, the, the words, the names of each strain on these tips are very close together. So there's a tip there, there's a tip there. They are very close together, so their genomes are very similar. So you expect same genus, same species, same subspecies, just different strains from different patients, so very similar. Yaws and syphilis are both on the left end of this graph. They are fairly similar to each other. And then there's a very large branch length between treponema uh, cunuculei, or excuse me, treponema pallidum, subspecies cunuculei. So it's same genus, same species, just different subspecies in rabbits. But they are much more distantly related, very long branch length between uh, these subspecies here. So all strains of syphilis are closely related to each other, and that's implied by the fact that they are all part of the same subspecies. Rabbit syphilis is m much more distantly uh, related. I might have misspoke here. It is a, considered a separate species. It's Treponema paraluis cunuculei. So this is what we'd expect. It is a separate, same, same species, different genus. Treponema pallidum, subspecies pallidum, Treponema perilus cuniculei. So same genus, different species. We expect that to be different. Yaws is more similar to syphilis. Yaws is closer to syphilis than it is to rabbit syphilis. So comparative genomics can often be used to see how different strains or different species are related to each other and how different pathogens, where they may have originated from. So a spirochete was once isolated from a baboon and kept in, in culture in rabbits and then its genome sequenced. And when they sequenced, it was quite surprising that this spirochete, when they compared it to other genomes, was very similar to yaws. So even though rabbit syphilis is very different, the spirochetes that occur within rabbits, rabbit syphilis is very different from yaws or, or syphilis. This spirochete isolated from this baboon is very, very closely related to yaws. So if you didn't, if I didn't tell you it was from a baboon, you would assume that this was human yaws. One potential hypothesis here is that syphil that this the yaws originated from baboons and humans coming into contact with baboon blood. That's how it uh, yaws was introduced to humans. Alternatively, humans could have introduced it to baboons. So trees can be rooted or unrooted. It depends on the goals or the interests. These are the two of the exact same. These are the exact same trees: A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C. So this clade here matches this clade there. D, E, F here. This lower clade here matches this clade here. Exact same trees, same relative order, same clade structure. This one just has a root indicating where the common ancestor of all of the species or all the tips is.